first of all, you didn't know him. You didn't work under him. So how- he did come to the comedy store once. Oh. I think you were gone. And this isn't like my Harvey Weinstein story. Like it's not close to how awful most of the women's stories are. But it is, I think, more like kind of funny. He came to the comedy store and uh, I, got, I went on stage in the main room and then I left. And then Tommy called me and he was like, oh, Tar- Harvey Weinstein came here to see you. Um, he's here. You need to come back and talk to him. And I was like, I was like already at the improv or already like whatever. And I was like, I, I don't want to go. And then the only reason I did not go back at first, I was like, fuck him for just like summoning me to come back. <laughs> I'm making $20. $22 at the comedy store. Like, I don't, you know, and uh, it already took me 40 minutes to get out of the comedy store parking lot. I can't go back in there. And uh, I remember literally just being like, the lighting in there is bad. I don't want him to see me. The lighting is bad. <laughs> like, the lighting on stage is great. Like, he saw me at my best, and I really don't want to go back and like talk to him. I don't like know how to do small talk with the producers. I'm not, you know me, I'm like a neurotic mess. Like, I'm not good at like, charming and whatever um but that yeah is such a crazy way to think of things Insane. the lighting there was perfect yeah but I, it's gonna be <laughs> everything after me. that's a disaster i gotta go like he saw me at my best like let me just get the fuck out of here but like i i didn't know how bad it was but i knew you know it's like the kind of thing that it's like we didn't know what we didn't Don't know you, and, you feel a little guilty though like what you're saying <laughs> what i'm getting is that you've people saying that to you you feel like oh uh, of course I, I didn't do it i didn't do, i'm not, I'm not <laughs> Totally. Yeah, I think right. that there's a lot of women that kind of have done nothing wrong, but were consumed with guilt and shame. Like, Men too. I? Yeah. But I, I, I'm so glad to hear you say that because I'm yeah. just not hearing a lot of that. I'm not hearing a lot of empathy and maybe I'm just like zoning in on negative comments. Or- I've never had a female employee and I've never worked in an office. But right. even though you hear all this sexual harassment yeah. shit and, uh, and you, you go... Did I do anything? Yeah. You got you to gotta check. It seems like everybody did something. But it's like, it, but we were the same way. It's like, I mean, I remember working on a talk show and everyone's like, oh, well, does that count? That's not as bad as rape. Right. Like getting granular about it. Like right. I remember I worked on a, um, a talk show, late night talk show, and a guy came up to me um, in front of like a couple of the writers and he took his hand and like put it between my butt cheeks and just went like swiped. And he was like, it's like a credit card machine. And like everybody started laughing. And of course I started laughing because I didn't, right. I froze and I was embarrassed. Was he your friend? No, he was like my coworker. Mm. Like, you know. Okay. And it was just kind of a dick comedy <laughs> writer. And I was like, what do I do? What am I going to do? I mean, at the time I had no concept that it was offensive. I was emotionally right. so numb and unconscious in my 20s. Like I didn't even think to do anything about it. But looking back, I'm like, that was fucked up. But what was I going to call human resources and say that he, it's just, right. it just, there's all these little tiny things that aren't enough to be assault, but are too much to be appropriate. And it's just like a gray area that I don't, I, you know, I, it's, it's hard for us to, to delineate what makes sense and what doesn't. Well, it's funny how cautious you are now. I mean, we're good friends, but we're joking around. We, we had these uh, hoverboards, yeah, yeah, and we're rolling around these hoverboards. <laughs> if I had fallen, you would not have caught me because you didn't want to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what That's my said, fear. <laughs> but what you had said was hilarious. You you wanted to say something about a That's porn. Right. That's right. But you weren't sure if you could talk about it yeah. because you were worried that you uh-huh. bringing up a porn <laughs> yeah. would somehow or another be sexually harassing. <laughs> yeah. And I had to say, like, hey, that doesn't work. <laughs> you can't do that to me. Like, you say whatever the fuck you want. I remember. I'll give you license right now publicly. Say whatever the fuck you want forever. <laughs> you can't I, sexually harass women me. Women feel it too. Like, I, you know, I don't want to. Uh, well, you don't. You would look feel at like me. A I'm stuttering. I'm right? panicking. Exactly. Right. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Right. And, um, you know, I've been coming back to the comedy store a lot and I hadn't been there in the last like six months. I've been working on something and I noticed when I used to go to the comedy store, I used to feel like prey <coughs> or any comedy club. It was like, you know, people would hug you too long and, you know, you were just waiting to kind of like have something inappropriate happen. I went in the other night, not one man hugged me. <laughs> Everyone was like, hello, my lady. People were like <laughs> bowing at me. Uh, no one would come near me like I was a fucking leper. Donnell Rawlings came up to me and gave me a hug. And halfway through, he was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Am I allowed to do that? And I was just like, oh, whoa, like this is this is fucking crazy. The tables have turned because it used to be women were terrified of men. And now men are kind of terrified of women. Definitely guys are afraid of being called out. Yeah. There's a, a lot of that. And a lot of guys going over there. Are you afraid there. if you don't have skeletons in your closet, though? If you're afraid if you don't? If you don't. Are you afraid because you know you have some shit? Well, here's the thing. You don't have to have skeletons in your closet. Sure. You can just have a bad relationship. Sure. Where someone's mad at you. Mm-hmm. Like, this Aziz Ansari thing is very bizarre. Mm-hmm. Like, this seems like he went on a bad date mm-hmm. and they took turns eating each other out and blowing each other. 
and then she didn't like it and mm-hmm. she said that there was like i don't know what the fuck happened because i wasn't yeah. there yeah but there's a lot of people yeah. that are picking sides on this and here's and i'm not accusing or supporting either side because i don't think there's enough yeah. information yet and it all seems very like he had one experience she had one experience mm-hmm. and if they're both telling the truth you know who fucking knows but here's what i'll say just about my experience in my 20s as a woman is i was not fully formed yet at 22 years old i didn't know i no one is i had literally no sex i wanted to have in my 20s <laughs> i didn't well, want to have we it. understand that now that the frontal lobe is not really fully formed in human beings correct. until you're 25 correct so hey guys in your 30s and 40s stop dating 20 year olds just in general it's just a bad idea you know and i think that a really um big part of the conversation that um, for me a blind spot is um sexual abuse uh victims yeah so the statistics are a little foggy but like one out of six women are sexually assaulted as children and those are only the people that come forward is that real yes one out of six one out of six is 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 the statistic for people that come forward Jeez. that's not even including the people that don't come forward which is a lot which um and not to get too serious did you see that fucking olympic i'm sorry to interrupt you no. but did you see that olympic thing it makes me it makes me crazy that olympic thing is insane the olympic gymnastics coach or doctor rather that was molesting all those girls it makes me want to it makes me homicidal and, and when they're doing the testimony the girls are, he's saying that this is too uncomfortable for him to listen to these girls i i if i saw that guy on the street i think i'd kill him with my hands i'd have to i would go i would go back to crazy so um, I don't talk about this publicly because I'm too embarrassed. That's the other thing about this. I think that guys, uh, some guys, um, have this idea that us being sexually harassed is like fun for us and we like want to come forward and there's some glory in it. It's embarrassing and it's awful. And I don't talk about my sexual assault um, publicly because I just like freeze up and I but can't. But you're very self-aware. There are people that take some sort of glory in being victimized maybe i can't i can't speak to that i mean what i mean by that is to the point where they will exaggerate any sort of interaction with someone so there's people maybe. that but men and women i right? so here's what i'll say that that could be true i don't know enough about the science of that um and i'm not a psychiatrist but right. my experience was the opposite i minimized mine i didn't come most to term- people do I didn't come to terms with the fact that I was sexually assaulted until I was 32. I'm 35. Like, I just kind of figured this shit out. And there's a lot of stuff that is still blind spots that I don't want to deal with. And uh, and I was only able to write about it in my book because I, I just I can't talk about it publicly. Right. Like, I freeze up. I get um, weird and scared. And one of the trauma responses of if you've been sexually assaulted as a child is that when a man moves towards you or you have any kind of sexual. See, I'm like getting all nervous. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you have a sexual interaction, you freeze up. Because when you were sexually assaulted as a child, it didn't serve you to fight back, and you had to kind of disassociate. And right, that is the, that's why people get confused with it: fight or flight. It's sure. not just fight or flight. Freeze, freeze. is Huge. a big one. I have a freeze yeah. response. And I should around be sex. clear about what I'm saying, so nobody misconstrues this. What I'm saying, I'm not talking about real victimization. I'm talking about people that love to play the victim. Sure, there are a lot of people. I'm not talking about real victim. When I sure. say that people take glory in victimization yes. i don't mean someone who's actually been sexually assaulted i mean someone who may have had a weird interaction with the person when they said something to them and, and by the way or, i've i've done that like um you know i get bumped at the comedy store and i'm like can you fucking believe i got bumped it's like i, I just am getting adrenaline and, and dopamine from like being self-righteous or mm. having been wronged or something i i, I know what you mean mm. from that perspective but i think when it's something real yeah my reaction is to completely freezing is it. a big one yeah yeah, so it's like it's for a, me that's also a big one with assault mm-hmm. if, if people uh, get not just sexual things but physical assault a lot of one of the things that happens to people when they're confronted by someone in a dangerous situation is they panic mm-hmm. and they freeze they don't do anything they don't they, can't, they literally can't move so if at least 20 percent of women have that who knows what the fuck is going on in some of these interactions so for me like in my 20s when a guy came towards me i would freak out and and people go like, well, why didn't they say no why didn't they leave because i'm fucking frozen and i don't know what to do and anybody that says that has never been involved in any sort of real altercation when they're in danger mm-hmm. anybody says why didn't you just do-? well mm-hmm. you don't know why you didn't do things yeah like there's times in my life when i look back i'm like why didn't i fucking say something yeah or why didn't yeah. i why didn't i uh, tell that guy to fuck off or what well, you don't know what to do sometimes. and that's a lot of i mean that was me in my whole 20s why didn't i tell him no why didn't yeah. i leave why didn't i tell him to stop like you know so so a lot of it i didn't even understand because i was too young to right. and i also i didn't it took me 15 years of a 12-step program and therapy and emdr to even be able to What's say emdr emdr um eye movement reprogramming and desensitization how the fuck would you expect anyone to know what that means where you could just yell? 
<laughs> just you, say that. Here's what I'll say. Your fans are so fucking smart and like they're such neurology nerds. Yeah, but that's off the deep end. Well, EMDR. I mean, it's I've DMDR. never heard of that shit it's in a, all my life. It's a, a post-traumatic stress disorder or therapy. Uh, oh. It was started for um, uh, Vietnam vets wow. and it helps you to sort of deactivate traumatic experiences. Have you ever done ecstasy? No. Yeah, nope. MDMA therapy is supposed to be amazing for people that have gone through trauma. I've been told about this. Yeah. I'm going to go to Coachella next year and Bow! try that. I don't know if that's the place. <laughs> um, but it's supposed to be amazing for people that have gone through real traumatic experiences that are just so ingrained in their mind. Like the memories of those experiences are ingrained with trauma and horrible feelings. And somehow or another, MDMA therapy allows people to separate from that and 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 lose the trigger and like lose lose this. this that sounds like a way more fun way to do it because yeah. EMDR is like you sort of have to relive the memory and then other shit gets unearthed and things start clicking into focus. Well, the reason why they call it ecstasy is because that's literally what you feel. You feel so much love and it, what what hit it I only floods did it your once. brain with dopamine. Yes. Right? And I only did it once, but the thing that stunned me was how uh, comparatively insecure I am in regular life. Comparatively insecure. Can you say Com that? Again? Comparatively insecure compared to when you're on ecstasy. Oh, when God. You're on you have ecstasy, no inhibitions. None, and... Zero. You're so friendly oh, and wow. so warm and but so you're always affectionate. Like that. I try to be. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're. When you're on ecstasy, you really realize like all the hitches in your personality, all the wow. things that are holding you back. It made me. I only did it once, but it made me completely aware of insecurity that I didn't even know existed. That's fascinating. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, you do it. You, you trip out. It's very interesting. I'm super into it. I, I had another friend um, recommend that, and I'd be down because it's also like, you know, and something else I'll say, not to speak for all women, like I'm not the face of all women, but like with this administration, if you're a sexual trauma survivor, seeing this fucking guy on the news every day can be really triggering. Did like, you see his post about the Women's March? I, I, his Twitter Joe, post was hilarious. I literally can't read the news anymore because I'm too activated and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm Ooh, going activated. crazy. at all.